Good morning and welcome to Life Church. Let's stand this morning as we worship together. than this side. That that did not sound right. Sorry. Okay. There are more people on this side than this side. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have a lot going on this morning, so I will get started. Uh, in two weeks on April 14th, we are going to start having some small groups on Sunday nights. So if you feel like you um, would like to lead a small group, if you would talk to Pastor James in the next week or so, that would be wonderful. Um, we're going to do them on campus, and we're going to do them off of campus. So we're just going to kind of see where it goes, and we'll have official sign-ups next week if you'd like to be a part of a small group. Right after church today, our Life Kids will need to walk down to um, the parking area 
down there, and we have a special Easter skit that is set up. Uh, there's been a tomb built down there in the corner, and so the kids are going to have a, a little lesson and a skit before they have the big Easter egg hunt. And um, right now, uh, if you guys will um, uh, go and shake the hand of somebody that you haven't seen before, um, and tell them that you're glad that you see them. And Life Kids, if you've been practicing to perform this morning, if you'll go ahead and make your way up. We are so excited that you're here this morning with us to celebrate Easter. Life Kids has been practicing a couple of songs. They've really been um, working on worship and what it means. So this first song is really their favorite worship song. So we just ask that you sing along with them and, and enjoy it.
you in the eye and hesitated when I asked if you were all right. Seems like you're fighting for your life, but why? Oh, why? Why to wake in the middle of your nightmare? You saw it coming, but it hit you out of nowhere. And there's always scars when you fall that far. We lose our way, we get back up again. It's never too late to get back up again. And one day you won't shine. One more hand, Life Kids. Woo! Good job, guys. This morning, will you stand with us? We're just going to continue to worship together.
Thank you so much for this day, God, and what it means to us just to let us be here together and worship you, Father. God, I thank you for Easter and what it means to us and the hope that we have through it, God, and through your son. God, I thank you so much for the kids that were up here this morning, Father, God, and just the promise that they bring. Thank you so much for their excitement and their enthusiasm this morning just to worship you. God, I pray that we will show the same excitement and have the same enthusiasm to worship you this morning, Father. God, I ask that you just bless this service. Be with Pastor James. Amen.
You may be seated. Thank you for worshiping with us. Welcome to Live Church. We are so honored that you've chosen to join us today for this wonderful day that we call Easter, a day that we celebrate Christ rising again from the dead. It's not just a story, but it's real, and that's why we're here today. So truly, we are honored that you've chosen to join us today. Hey, uh, the last few weeks uh, as we've gathered, uh, I guess throughout the month of March, and, and we, we've looked into some messages on deliverance, on journeys. And uh, how many of you all are looking forward to a journey sometime soon? Maybe you're going on vacation, you've got a trip planned or something like that, and you can't wait for that journey to take place because you can go somewhere and, and you can just kind of let your hair down and relax and just, just kind of get the burdens and the stresses of the world out of, your, out of your mind and out of your life. You just can't hardly wait for that time to come. Oh, I look forward to those times when we can get away and do things like like that but we've been on a journey for the last few weeks and and over those weeks we've seen what god can do as he delivers us from from, from death to life he, he he can deliver us also as we as we journeyed uh, uh, through uh, another place from from the darkness of slavery to the joys of freedom from the darkness of, of death to the light of life he's he's delivered us from victimhood to the thrill of victory and from hypocritical religion to genuine relationship today what we're going to begin to look at as we as we think about journeys and and, and what we've been looking at as we conclude this this last message and 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 uh, the kind of a, a loosely based adaption of what's going on on sunday nights the bible mini series we're going to look tonight uh as, as, as this morning is, is kind of going along with what tonight will be about from darkness to light and uh when you think about that and you think about darkness we want to look back just a few minutes this morning and, and uh, realize that the story begins with Jesus' arrest and his trial and, and his crucifixion. And this was just a series of incidents in, in, in the life of the last few days of, of the Lord that it just kind of took his followers by surprise. They, they wasn't expecting this all the way back from the beginning of, 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 of their, their, their following of Jesus. He had come by the seaside at one time and he'd he called a number, number of the disciples and he said, if you'll follow after me, I'm going to make you to become fishers of men. And the Bible says they forsook all and they followed him. He called a fellow by the name of Matthew from the receipt of custom. He was a tax collector and uh, he wasn't liked by either side. But Jesus called him to be one of his disciples and he got up and he left that and he, and he began to follow Jesus. These men had left everything to follow after the Lord. And after all these events that had taken place over the last week of Jesus' life, they were devastated. 
Their lives were crushed. They, they didn't know what to do. They were surprised by all of these events that had taken place. They'd seen Jesus walk on the water. They'd seen him raise the dead. They'd seen him do all of these things. And, and even just a week before this, when he'd enter into the holy city of Jerusalem, people would stand beside the roadside and, and they would wave palm branches. They would throw their clothes out in the middle of the road so that he could ride across those. He would enter into Jerusalem victorious. And the people thought, finally, the deliverer had come to free them from Roman slavery. But their hopes had been dashed. They'd seen Jesus on Good Friday hang up on a cross. He was arrested, he was tried, and he was crucified, executed as a criminal. When you begin to think about those things, and you think about the journey from, from darkness to light, you think about probably the greatest contrast from one thing to another that your mind can even imagine. In fact, Matthew explains it to us kind of like this. Darkness came over the whole land. And when it came over them, their hearts and their minds, their spirits, and everything within them was just, again, it was just devastated. Now, have you ever really experienced darkness? Sometimes in darkness, it takes just a moment for your eyes to adjust, and then you can see just a little bit. I remember when I was a boy, when I would be young, and I would have to go outside and feed the dogs, or I would have to do something outside. When I was young, I was afraid of the dark. I didn't like to go outside in the dark when I was by myself. Darkness is a frightening thing. It's something that we're not comfortable with. In fact, earlier this morning when we came in and and, and we was kind of working with the lights and things like this. And I told Tyson, Tyson, I want you to turn off all the lights. And, and I began to walk through the church. And I walked right smack into a pew. And, and man, I bruised myself. And I fell down. When we're walking in darkness, we can't see. We're blind. We don't know what's going on around us. Many times in darkness, we, we stumble through situations in life and we don't know again where we're going we don't know even hardly where we've been we're just kind of existing when we sit in darkness but the bible says in one place the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light and when you think about that and you think about that that great light when you think about what light means and and how that illuminates the way when you think about what light is designed for, remember Jesus said himself, I am the light of the world. And he tells us that if we follow after him, we don't have to walk, we don't have to live anymore in darkness. You see, Jesus was the light of the world. And it's through him that we can have guidance throughout this life. Now, as we begin to get into the scripture this morning, if you would like to, if you brought your Bibles with you, we're going to turn to the book of John, chapter 20. And uh, maybe in your life you've experienced darkness. Maybe you've experienced things in your life that you didn't know what direction to take, you didn't know what pathway to follow. You walked in darkness. And as we begin to, to look at the, the idea of the tomb and and all the events that was taking place around this particular time, we want you to understand today, just as the disciples and all the followers of Jesus would eventually come to find out in that time, there is hope. And for you this morning, if you're stumbling around, if you're faced with indecision, you're faced with things like that in your life, if there's one thing that I want you to understand this morning, is there is hope. If you have your Bibles again in the book of John, we're going to begin reading just a little bit of scripture from, from, verse, from chapter 20. The Bible says in verse 1 these things. Early in the morning, early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. Let's read verse 2. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and she said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Now, I 
want you to understand a few things about this scene that's taking place on, on Easter Sunday morning. I want you to see what's going on here, and I want you to understand that this scene begins to speak of the darkness of confusion. As Mary and, and some of the other ladies that morning came to the tomb, they really didn't know what to expect. They had came to the tomb that morning to anoint the body of Jesus who had been hastily taken down from the cross. And, and really, even though a, a couple of fellows had anointed his body, but they didn't have very much time before the Passover would, would begin to take place. Before the Sabbath day would be. So they hastily wrapped his body and they, they put it in a tomb. But the ladies were, were on their way back to the tomb this morning to, to do a proper burial, to do a proper anointing of his body. I want you to think for just a few minutes as, as you put yourself into that scene as Mary and, and maybe the other ladies was walking toward the tomb and they were a little bit confused on what events had just taken place. Put yourself in Mary's shoes for just a few minutes this morning and, and think about Mary's state of mind that morning what she would have been thinking, what she would have been planning and preparing for maybe the remainder of her life. If you remember, Mary had been a lady that had been had a lot of issues going on in her life. In fact, the Bible says that perhaps seven demons had been cast out of Mary. And she was a very devout follower of Jesus. She went with him just about everywhere that he went. She was a, a, a follower. She was in herself a, a a lot like the disciples, perhaps in many ways more devoted than even they were. Imagine her mind that Sunday morning. She had to have been grief-stricken because just two days earlier she had witnessed the crucifixion of Jesus, a man that she had placed all of her hopes, all of her dreams, all of the, her future she had placed on this man. She had seen him suffer things that she probably couldn't get out of her mind and, and probably things that she would never ever forget so as she went to the tomb that morning her mind was was racing now maybe you know somebody close to you that uh, maybe is very important to you and and you know that that grief doesn't go away overnight it it lingers grief stays with us for a long period of time and this deep grief is what mary is feeling this morning so I think we can be pretty sure that as Mary went to the tomb that morning, she wasn't happling, uh, 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 whistling a, a very happy tune. Uh, as she walked to this place, uh, she was not thinking about all the joys of, of salvation. She wasn't thinking about all these things, but she was just thinking, the one that I've given my life for, trusted in completely, is gone. Jesus is dead. Now, maybe you can identify with what Mary's thinking. Sometimes when we gather at a place like this and, and, and we're here today and, and we think that we've got it really bad, I can be relatively sure today that most of us don't have it quite as bad as Mary did that day. But I want you to look and see what happens next. After Mary is, is making her way to the tomb and after all these things have taken place, I want to move down a little bit farther into the Scripture and begin reading in verse 14. It says she turned to leave and saw someone standing there. And it was Jesus. But she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? Well, she thought he was a gardener, sir, she said. If you have taken him away, tell me where you've put him, and I will go get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned him and cried out, Rabboni, which is Hebrew for, for teacher or, or for master. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet descended to my father. But go find my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord, and she gave them his message. Now again, what's going on here is as, as, as Mary is there and she's weeping and she's crying and, and Jesus appears to her. She doesn't recognize him. And there could be a number of reasons why she didn't recognize him. Maybe by this time the sun had come up a little bit. And, and you know how it is when you, when you kind of begin to look up at something and lights are in your eyes and you really can't see very much in front of you. It could have been something like that. It could have been that her, that her eyes were just so filled with tears that she couldn't recognize who it was standing there. 
Maybe she just thought it was, again, the gardener. Just somebody else at the tomb. Maybe she thought, maybe this just it was playing tricks with her eyes. It could have been a number of things. But by any case, her confusion began to disappear when Jesus spoke her name. When he just very softly said, Mary. And she recognized that voice. She knew she had heard that before. Now let me say this this morning. Each and every one of you in this building today, Jesus has spoken your name. And he said, it's not my will that anyone would perish, but that all would come to repentance. And that means each one of us today, he wants us each one to, to come to him, to recognize him for who he is, for each one of us to recognize today that Jesus has risen from the dead. And he's spoken your name. I remember when he spoke my name. And I began to realize that it was time for me to give my life to him. To recognize that Jesus was Lord and that he had risen from the dead. I remember that time. But she recognized his voice. Then notice what takes place next. Jesus begins to give her a commission. He told her to take the news of his resurrection to others. He said, take this news to, 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 to Peter and the disciples. Let them know what you saw, what you've heard. Let them know that I'm alive. And you see, he gave her a commission just like he gives you and I a commission. It's up to you and, and, and I to, to go out and to tell others and to love others like Jesus loved others. He gave her a commission. Mary became the first evangelist of the resurrection in, in Christian history. And she went and told the disciples and Peter. So that's what we're called upon to do. We may be downhearted, confused, maybe be depressed about many different things. But he calls for us to go. So if we've invited the risen Christ into our hearts, we have a commission as well to go. And to tell others. Because his resurrection tells us, among a lot of other things, that this life is not all there is. This isn't it. No matter how good you've got it, and no matter how poor you've got it, this life is not all there is. His re resurrection tells us that death is not the end. It tells us that if we hope in Christ, all of our hopes can be revived. Our hope is not in this world only. Because if our hopes were in this world only, man, the scriptures tell us we'd be most miserable. This world, this life, will disappoint you. But our hope is not in this life only. It's in the life to come. It's in Christ. And the resurrection tells us that our Savior has triumphed over the worst that this world can throw at you. And folks, let me tell you, this world will throw everything it's got at you because our adversary, the devil, is the prince of the power of the air. He's doing everything that he can do to trip you up. In fact, if you remember back just a few days before this event takes place, uh, Jesus is telling Simon that Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat, but he, then he says, but I've prayed for you that your faith would not fail. Jesus today, as he's risen, is at the right hand of God right now as we speak, right now as you sit where you're sitting. Jesus is right now at the right hand of God, and he's making intercession for each one of you. Praise God. He's making intercession for us each one today. So as we look into that and, and we see like Mary, the soul that's trusted in Christ is given the same commission to just simply go. Jesus healed a group of men one time, and they were lepers. He comes out and he, he just tells them uh, uh, to go in, to the priest and, and show them what's happened. And as they went, they were healed. He didn't heal them right there on the spot. But he told them what to do. And when they did that, they were healed. You know, sometimes when we're dazed, confused, and, and, and a lot of things are going on in our life that we don't understand, we still must go. 
because many times that's where the blessing lies, is as we obey the commandment of the Lord. The darkness of confusion. But there's another kind of darkness also that, that we can see uh, illustrated in these scriptures this morning. And if we read down, uh, starting in verse 19, it begins to show it to us. It says, that Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. And as he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. As we see this scene beginning to unfold before us this morning, we can see that this scene speaks of the darkness of fear. Where were the disciples when all these things had taken place? Even after they had heard the word that Jesus was alive, where were they? The Bible says right here they were behind locked doors. And it says they were afraid. They were afraid. Now, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that in the world today that we're going to have a lot of things that, that are fearful. A lot of things in life today that, that we have a very difficult time dealing with because of fear. But they were gathered behind locked doors. Why? For fear. Now, think about that for just a minute. Peter, the one that had walked on the water, where was he at? Behind locked doors for fear. James, who was considered to be one of the sons of thunder, was behind locked doors for fear. John, the disciple who had stood with Jesus to the very bitter end, even at the, even at the crucifixion, John was there. But John was behind locked doors for fear. I know that probably some of us in the building today can identify with things like that. Uh, maybe emotionally we have fears. Maybe, maybe physically we have fears. A lot of different things cause us fear uh, of being hurt again. Maybe we have a fear of, of messing up again. Maybe we have a fear of, of, of a large number of things. They, they, they cause us fear. But the Bible teaches us that we don't have to live any longer in fear. If you see what begins to happen next, the Bible says that Jesus came through locked doors. He stood in their midst and he said, peace be with you. Jesus comes and he says, peace. We recall a number of different times in the scripture where Jesus would appear upon a scene of something that's going on that was very fearful and he just simply said, peace. When the angels would come and they would speak to anybody, one of the first things that they would say is fear not. We are not given the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear does not come from God, but it comes from your enemy. We do not have to live today in fear. So when Jesus comes and he, he, he comes through those locked doors into a place where they were fearful and they were afraid, he just simply says, peace. Peace be still. You know, their story can be your story too. When you're in the presence of the Lord, when you're in the presence of Jesus, you don't have to live in fear. Just like when I was a, a, a young boy, I didn't have to be afraid of the dark. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to live in fear. Are you afraid today of anything? You don't have to be. Jesus can come. He can speak peace in your life. All the things that's going on around you, he can calm those things. His first words to his followers as he entered those doors, the very first time that he seen them after he rose from the dead, was peace. You see, that's what he wants you to have. That's what he made it possible for you to have when he rose from the dead. But even that's not all. This scene in the, in the scriptures that we can talk about also can speak to us about the darkness of doubt. Now, as we think about the scriptures and everything that's going on here, and Jesus had, had appeared on that Sunday night before his disciples, one of the disciples wasn't there. 
actually two. Judas had already went off his own way. But another disciple among the eleven wasn't there, and it was Thomas. And because Thomas wasn't there and because he didn't believe the story of the other disciples and Mary and everyone that told him that Jesus is alive, he got this, this, this title that still rings to him today. It's still connected with him today. In fact, anyone whose name is Thomas, a lot of time there's a, there's a word that is kind of tacked to that name, and you know what it is? Doubting Thomas. Thomas wasn't there. But a week later, they would be gathered in the same place, same scenario. And Thomas was with them. And he didn't believe what the disciples had told him, but he was there. And all of a sudden, Jesus appears in their midst again. And Thomas has already said, I won't believe unless I, unless I see his hands and his feet. Unless I'm able to, to touch him. Unless I'm able to, to maybe even to place my fingers in his side. I, I can't believe. I won't believe. He was determined that he wasn't going to believe it. But then Jesus appeared. I just kind of picture the scene. And Jesus kind of walks in and he just says, Thomas, here I am. And he begins to hold his hands out. Perhaps waiting for Thomas to come up and, and really begin to identify and kind of look and see and, and examine the, the, the wounds and all those things like that. But that's not what Thomas did. From wherever Thomas was, he just began to look at him. And he just simply uttered, my Lord and my God. Now, a lot of us today are a lot like Thomas. A lot of us, unless we see it with our very own eyes, unless we reach out and we can, we can hold it, we can touch it, uh, we, we don't believe. It's hard for us sometimes to believe the Scriptures in the, in, in the Word of God because they're just so miraculous. It's hard for us to really grasp some of these things but when we begin to understand today, if we choose to believe, if we choose to understand that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, that he truly came forth from that tomb on Easter morning, then we can believe. Thomas didn't have to touch the Lord. He didn't have to take his hand and begin to roll it around and look at it. He didn't have to place his, his, his fingers in, in Jesus' side, or he didn't have to touch the wound. He recognized Jesus for who he was. Now many times we think we need proof. A lot of times, like I said, we need to see or we need to hold or we need to touch or we need to do all these things. Sometimes we think we need something tangible, something irrefutable. Sometimes we think we've got to have all this proof before we can believe. But we really don't need all that. All we really need to do is open the eyes of our heart. Just begin to see with our spiritual eyes that God placed in every single one of us. Begin to open up and let the light of the Lord pour into our, into our heart. And then we can begin to see. Just like Mary who came to the tomb in darkness. But when Jesus spoke her name, she recognized who that he was. And did you know this morning that if you're here and, and you've come to this place this morning in darkness, Jesus is, is speaking your name this morning. And he wants you to come to him. He wants you to, to just with the eyes of your heart, with, with just your spiritual being, to just accept who that he is and just accept that he rose from the dead to give us victory over death and the grave. You see, that's why he came. From the time that he was born in a manger, he came to die on a cross. But he didn't come to stay on the cross. He didn't come to stay in the tomb. He came to rise again over death and give us victory over death and the grave. A fresh vision this morning of Jesus dispels the darkness of doubt. And it gives us each one a new beginning. It was true of the very first followers of Jesus after just gathering behind those locked doors. After they overcome their doubts, they took to the streets of Jerusalem. And they done miraculous things themselves. Pre Peter preached probably the most successful sermon that's ever been preached on the face of the earth. 
when thousands of people would come to faith in Jesus. They dispelled any doubt when Peter and John walked up the temple steps and just a blind beggar was lying there. Peter walked up up to this man and said, Silver and gold, I, I don't have any. But what I have, I'm going to give to you. And he reached out and he took him by the hand and he says, Rise up and walk. He was a cripple. He was a cripple. And he rose up and he walked. He had free. No more doubts. No more confusion. No more fear. If you read about these fellows in the Bible and in the book of Acts, you would find it hard to believe that these were the same men. The people that ran away when Jesus was arrested. The people that, that cowered behind locked doors on, on, on Easter Sunday. But when Jesus came into their heart and their life, and he showed himself to those men, what a difference came over their life. They were no longer in the darkness of doubt, of fear, and all those things that many times hinder us today. Darkness is always replaced by light. The Bible says where Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If we'll follow after him, we don't have to walk in darkness. You see, as we turned the lights off while ago, there's a great contrast between darkness and light. And there's a journey to be taken. And that journey starts with faith. And the question must be asked this morning, do you believe? Do you have the type of faith that allows you to just simply believe that Jesus is alive today and that he loves you? And he wants to do a work. I'm going to ask if you guys would, if, if the band would begin to make their way on up. This morning, you can, you can be delivered. You can be saved from the darkness of confusion. And you can enter the light into a new commission. You can be saved from the darkness of fear. And, and you can enter to the light of His very presence and His peace. You can be saved from the darkness of doubt. And you can enter into a light of His new beginning, a new start fresh start. Remember Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. You don't have to live any longer in What happens when you open your eyes to Christ? When your heart opens to Him? What happens when you do what Jesus urged Thomas to do? When He said, stop doubting and believe. What happens? Everything changes. Jesus' word to Thomas is the same word that he gives to every single one in the building today. And just simply believe. I hope that's where you are today. I hope that every single one of you today is in a, in a, in a stage of your life where, where you just believe, where you just trust God with all that you've got. No matter what you're faced with, no matter what comes before you, you just trust God. It's just going to be all right. Maybe you're facing death. You know others are facing death. Or, or maybe you're facing loss of, uh, of a job. Or you're facing a disease or sickness. Uh, but you just have that, that belief in God that everything's just going to be all right. I submit myself to you, God. Is that where you're at today? Praise God if you are. But if you're not, Easter morning shows us. I hope this morning that you'll open your heart to the risen Christ right now. I hope you'll let him guide you from, from darkness to light, from confusion, from fear, from doubt to a new commission, a new presence, and a new peace in your life. A new beginning given just to you. Will you do that this morning? Will you make today an Easter? Would you stand with me for just a moment this morning? We're honored to 
have every one of you today. We're honored to have you as a guest with us today. I don't know where you stand. I don't know where you are in your heart and your walk with God right now. But if you're here today and you're lost, if you're here today and you're facing doubts and fears and confusion and things such as this, and you want that new beginning, if you want to surrender and give your heart to the Lord, I want to ask you for just a moment to bow your head, close your eyes, and I want you to pray with me this morning if you want. Would you do it? Let's pray together. Father, today as we come before you on this Easter Sunday morning, God, I pray that today that you would rise in my heart. That you would be risen in our life and, and how that we live before you today. Lord, I pray that you would shine your light in, 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 in my darkness, in my confusion, my doubts, and my fears. Lord, I pray that you would erase these things from my life. To let me experience truly and totally the risen Christ. Father, I pray today that I could overcome my reluctance, my procrastination, and putting things off. God, I pray that today would be the day that I could fully surrender myself to you. Lord, I confess today that I'm a sinner. And I'm in need of a Savior. And Lord, right now I turn to you. And I claim your sacrifice on the cross as payment for all the wrongs that I've done, all the sins that I've committed. And Lord, I believe today that the resurrection from the dead is a sign for me that I might follow you. From this moment on, God, I ask you to come into my heart and take charge of my life. Amen. Thank you, Lord, today for who you are. If you're here today and, and you've prayed that prayer with sincerity, if, you, if, if you're here today and, and you've faced those things in your life and you've prayed that prayer and you've asked the Lord to, to erase these things from you, you believe that you have faith and He's able to do it. We're so glad that you joined us today at Life Church. We invite you to come back and be a part of our group every Sunday. We pray that the Lord today is risen you come in, you got a connection card in your in your bulletin, in your, in your worship guide. Before you get out of here today, if you're a new guest with us, we would invite you to, to fill that out as we take up an offering here in just a few moments to put that in the offering. If you're new with us today, if you'd like to stop by our, our resource center out here, we've got a gift for you. Just saying thank you for coming and being part of Life Church today. God bless you is our prayer. Have a wonderful Easter day. As we allow the band to worship, we just pray that you would have a great day. God bless you.
service. We're so glad each and every one of you came out. We're going to take one more opportunity to worship together. If we could have the ushers come forward, we're going to take this time to give back our tithes and offerings to God. If you'll bow your heads with me. God, thank you so much for this morning, Father, and just the presence that we felt here, God. God, I pray that our worship was sweet to you this morning. God, I pray that everything we did this morning blessed your name. God, I pray for this offering and our tithes, God. Just let us use them wisely, Father, and just bless this church. Amen.